how is your church doing or your ministry? If you are uh, over a particular department or ministry at your church, how is it doing? This is a question that we are always asking, whether we are asking it externally or even just in our minds, we're asking, how are things going? How is this going? How is this ministry working? Is it doing what it's supposed to? The problem is, is that we oftentimes uh, evaluate the performance of a ministry or a church based on two things. One, the size, the attendance, how many people are coming, how many people are going to it, how many people are sitting in the seats, how many are people, how many people are on the bus going to the event, how many people show up attendance. The second one is how much money did we make, whether it's how much are people tithing, how much are they giving to missions, how much are they paying for, uh, to pay for the event, did we lose money, gain money, whatever. So those are the two metrics that we tend to use, the number of people and the amount of money that it either gains us or costs us. And the problem with both of those is that they're not good metrics. They're actually really bad metrics for figuring out whether or not your church is doing well or your ministry is doing well. And what I want to do in this episode is I want to show you a tool, a very simple tool that actually is a lot of fun to use that is going to give you a lot clearer understanding of what exactly is happening in your ministry or in your church and how you can improve it. So let's get started. So the big question is this, how do pastors like us who remain focused on the mission of Jesus and serving our communities without being distracted by everything in the world around us, how do we increase our effectiveness while living a lifestyle that doesn't compromise our health, our families, or our personal relationships with Jesus? That's the question this podcast is going to answer. I'm Dr. Brandon Party Cooper, and welcome to the Ministry Hackers Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of the Ministry Hackers Podcast. I hope you're doing wonderfully uh, wherever you are, whatever's happening in your world, whatever you are doing while you listen to this podcast, which is interesting to think about. Uh, all the ways that we uh, we listen to podcasts and watch videos and, and join in on whatever we're doing, uh, whether you're driving, hopefully you're being safe, maybe you are uh, doing some housework or milling around in the yard. Uh, maybe you are uh, showering. I know some of you do that. You take a shower and you throw on a podcast, whatever it is you're doing. Hope you're doing well. Hope it's going well. Hope you're being safe. Hope you're getting clean. If you're taking a shower, uh, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. Uh, for those who don't know me, and, uh, this may be your first, uh, the first time jumping in on the ministry hackers podcast and joining us. My name is Dr. Brandon party Cooper. I am the founder here at ministry hackers. And my number one goal, the goal that we have here at Ministry Hackers is to help you pastors and ministry leaders to live your dream life in ministry, whatever that looks like. We don't tell you what that looks like. We don't even tell you how to design it. We really just help you discover what God has already created for you. Because I believe all of us as pastors and ministry leaders, we have a life that God has created for us to live, a life that includes growing ministries and growing churches, as well as healthy, loving families vacation times, hobbies, downtimes, relaxation, no more anxiety, no more stressing, no more depression. Uh, I just don't think that that's what God has created for us all. And so my goal here and what we do here at Ministry Hackers is help you live that dream life in ministry. So uh, so glad that you're a part of us. So glad you're joining us for all of uh, our regular listeners, all of those who, who uh, join in all the time. Thank you so much because you are the reason this podcast and Ministry Hackers uh, exists, but you're also what is making it grow and, and, and help other pastors and make a difference around the country, helping pastors be effective as well as that live that dream life in ministry. So thank you so much for joining us. If this is your first time, thank you for stopping by, and I hope that you stick around and listen to more and watch more uh, episodes and podcasts as we continue. Uh, so <clears throat> what I want to talk about today is a tool, a very simple tool that is going to revolutionize how you look at your ministries. <clears throat> now, uh, all of us, we are constantly moving, constantly growing, uh, constantly doing stuff. We are right now, we are in the middle of the summer. Um, many of us are starting to look at the fall, starting to plan out what we're going to do. Uh, even some of us are starting to plan for our planning meetings in September and October, looking towards the next year. 2022 and what exactly we're going to do in that year and all of those things. But in the midst of planning, there's one step that we often do, whether it's official 
or unofficial, and that is assess where we are. Assess how our ministries are going. Assess how our churches are functioning. Assess <clears throat> what exactly is going on and what adjustments do we need to make? What things can we do differently? Um, what things are going well? Um, but we do this in a very unofficial, very kind of haphazard, random way, hopefully. Others of us, we don't assess at all. We don't spend any time assessing. We are just going. We're going and going and going and going. And we're, you know, we're Sunday to Sunday and we're Wednesday to Wednesday and we're event to event. And we are just going and we're creating things on the fly and we're reacting to this and reacting to that. And for those of us who have been in one position, one church, one ministry for several years, and that's how you've approached uh, growth and development is just by reacting to everything, then either one of two things are happening. One, your growth is very nominal, maybe almost non-existent, feels like your, ch your church or your ministry has plateaued and you just can't seem to get any traction. Or two, you've had growth, you've had some, some expansions, you've had those things, but you have no idea why. You have no idea what is creating that. Um, you have no idea what is um, generating growth and development. All you know is it's happening. And so you just, you just keep moving so that you, you know, the idea is, is that, you know, if you don't, if you don't stop, then the growth won't stop. You'll just keep going. But what that means is you can't replicate what you're doing. You can't replicate growth. You can't replicate uh, sustainable um, development. You can't replicate that because you have no idea what's going on. And so what I want to do today is I want to give you a tool that's very simple, very easy, that will help you not only evaluate what's going on in your ministry, in your church, but it'll also give you a snapshot and an understanding of your current reality, as well as the reality you're moving into, so that you can create strategic, intentional plans and ideas and, um, and, and execute them so that you can grow in an intentional, healthy way. For many of us as pastors, that's part of the problem is that even those of us who are experiencing growth, we don't really know why, or we can't pinpoint why. So we can't replicate the process, which means that we are stressed out trying to keep that ball rolling. Whereas if you assess, you take the moment, stop, assess, look at it, and you know exactly why growth is happening. You know exactly where things are working and why, where things aren't. Well, then you don't have to stress about it. You just tweak this, tweak that. And we see this in all kinds of other organizations. We see this in, obviously, in manufacturing is the easiest one because manufacturing is really just a bunch of knobs and twists. And, you know, you tweak this and you get this output and you tweak that and you get that output. And if something's not working right, you just go down the line and figure out where it's not working and you fix it or you tweak it. And then you, you know, you make the changes and then everything starts working again. In church, it's a lot more difficult. Um, in church, we aren't manufacturing anything. We are... Uh, developing people, loving people, walking them through difficult times, bringing them into relationships with Jesus, discipling them. So it's you can't just tweak this and tweak that. Uh, you can't just turn the knob and everything changes. However, you can look at what's going on, processes, your systems. You can look at your events. You can look at your services even. And you can say, here's what's working. Here's what's not. And here's how we replicate what is working. And here's how we either fix or eliminate the things that aren't. And what this tool is going to do is going to help you very simply do just that. And not only is it a tool to use, it's very simple to use, very insightful, but it's a lot of fun. And I'll explain that to you in a moment. So what the tool is, and many of you have heard this, it's not brand new. It's not, it's no super secret that's out there, but it's called a SWOT analysis. Now the SWOT analysis has been around for ever it's been used it's been tested it's been evaluated and it's you know from the largest organizations all the way to the smallest the SWOT analysis is a, is a very uh, valuable tool that's used across the board and SWOT SWOT um, it, it stands for strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats so essentially what you're doing is, is you're looking at your organization you're saying okay what are our strengths what are our weaknesses what are the opportunities there are out there for us? And what are the threats that we have to pay attention to? Now, for many of us, even looking at this last year, so we look at 2020, a huge threat to uh, the health and well-being and the sustainability of our churches was a global pandemic. Now, most of us in our uh, emergency plans or in any plans at all did not plan for the pandemic at all. However, 
it is one of the threats that's always looming. It's always out there. It's always something that we need to think about. And so we can, we've seen over this last year how a threat like that, for some of us, really set us back. Others of us, we had to pivot and pivot and pivot until we figured it out. And then for those others, some just didn't make it. Many churches have shut down. Or they are limping along right now, waiting to shut down because they can't recover from the threat of a pandemic. And so, so that's what the tool is, the SWAT tool, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. It's to try and look and see where we are and where we're going. And so strengths and weaknesses is internal. It's an internal evaluation of what's actually happening in your ministries, uh, in your systems, in your processes, in your, uh, you know, in your uh, promotions and all those things. Uh, opportunities and weaknesses tend to be external. Uh, things that are happening outside the church that either are going to open up doors or close doors or or challenge uh, the existence of the church itself. Stre strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And what I like to do, especially when I'm working with a team and we're sitting down and we're processing through this, and, and you as a pastor, a ministry leader, you can do this with your team, um, is sit down and go through the process together. And if you, you know, if you want to, you can check it out. Um, go to brandonpartycooper.com slash SWAT, S-W-O-T, brandonpartycooper.com slash SWAT. And there you can look at, see how you can hold your own SWAT workshop. You, you can get a free um, a SWAT template that you can use with your entire team and walk through step-by-step. Step. There are, let's see, there's six steps in the process of holding your own SWAT workshop. And what it will do by, by doing this, sitting down with your team, and I would say do it in the next month, month and a half, two months, whatever, before you do your annual planning meeting for 2022. So for those of you who, who have your annual planning meeting in September, October, I would encourage you to sit down, do the SWOT analysis with your team in the weeks to come before you do that. Because once you do your SWOT analysis, that will inform you of what you need to do moving forward. It'll inform you of the plans that you need to put in place for 2022. And so I'm just going to run down real quick what SWAT, you know, how to use the SWAT or, or what you're looking for. So obviously strengths. Strengths is, uh, this is a great way to start the process because the SWOT analysis, the, the strength part of it is really looking at what are we doing right? And as pastors, we are not always great at this. Some of us are really good at this. We are really good at championing and, and applauding others. Uh, we're not always great at doing it ourselves, on ourselves, saying, hey, pastor, me, uh, you're doing a good job in this. <laughs> we're usually overly critical or we go the other way where we just have blinders on and have no idea how well we're doing and we don't ask because we don't really want to know. What the SWAT, the strengths part is, is it allows you to say, hey, as a church, this is what we're doing well. These are things, the areas we're knocking out of the park, we're hitting home runs, we're really doing well. We need to keep doing this and improve on it as we go forward. That's the strength part. Uh, the weaknesses is exactly that. What are we not doing? And and the hard part with this, the hard part with the weakness section of the SWOT analysis is that you have to be honest. Honestly, through the whole thing, you have to be honest. But with the weaknesses, you really have to be honest. You have to be objective enough to say, I'm missing it in this area. Or you, pastor, looking at your team, saying, in this area, you're missing it. Hey, youth pastor, in this area, you're missing it. Hey, team, in this area, we are missing it. Now, none of us like that. It doesn't feel great, especially if we're having to tell team members that they're missing it. That doesn't feel good. They don't love it. Uh, you know, they don't, uh, most of the time, they don't thank you for uh, giving that great feedback. Uh, they really cringe and, you know, some of them get mad and, and can pout and throw fits and, um, you know, and some even will go as far as, as quitting. Um, but honestly... You can't move forward as a church or as a ministry. You cannot move forward if you can't look at the weaknesses and really own them. Look at them and say, yes, I missed it here and I'm going to do better. I missed it here and we maybe just need to eliminate it. Maybe you started a new initiative this last year. Maybe coming into 2021, you said, okay, you know, we're going to start this new thing. Maybe, maybe the new thing is online church. Maybe you're really giving it your all and you're going into online church and you're saying, we are really struggling. It's really not working. It's taking up a lot of our resources. And it's, it's, it's just not a strength. It's really a weakness of ours. 
you have two things. You have two options here. You can say, okay, it's a weakness. And so what do we need to do to make it better? Or you say, it's really a weakness for us. And we just need to cut it. I don't love cutting things, but quite honestly, I also don't love pastors wearing themselves out and stressing themselves out and, and beating themselves up, themselves up because they can't do 500 things really well. Sometimes you just got to cut things. If you don't have the volunteer base to make something, to take a ministry and, and make it work well, cut it. You know, we, uh, we, we see this a lot of times in, in, in kids and nursery. And I understand, you know, a church without a kids or a nursery uh, area is, it's really a rough place. And, you know, you have all these people in your church who won't volunteer in kids. So you have the same 10 people or five people who are doing it every week and you're burning them out and eventually they're going to leave. Well, what if you just cut it? I know it's not ideal. I know it's not what you really want to do, but what if, what if, what if, what if you cut it? What would happen? Or what if you cut something else and funnel those volunteers into the kids or the nursery area? And I'm not saying that's what you need to. I'm just saying when you look at the weaknesses part of the SWOT analysis, it helps you value, really put a value on what is priority one and what are the things that you're doing that really aren't that important. Sure, they might move the needle slightly, but when it's measured up against all the other things that have to be done, what are the things that you can just cut? It's a weakness already. You don't have the resources to put into more. Just cut it. And maybe down the road, when more resources are in place, when more time is available, you can add it back in. It's not forever. It's just for now. That's the weaknesses portion. So, and then you have the opportunities. Now, opportunities, these are my favorite because these are where you get to dream and plan and imagine all the awesome things that are available out there. Um, innovation is one of the things that I think as churches, we need to be better at. Uh, we, uh, we serve the creator, the creator of all things. He has more imagination than any of us could ever imagine. Um, he has more resources, more availability. He can think outside of the box like none of us can. And as Christians, if we just listen, if we just tap into the ideas that God has, has given us, the ideas that he is pouring into us, what kind of innovative things could we do differently? And I get it. Churches are hard when it comes to change. And if you haven't created a, a culture in your church that embraces change, I would start working on that right away. Because if you get to this section of opportunities and you say, oh, we can't do that. Now, maybe you can't do it because of resources. You don't have the resources. That's fine. Maybe you build up to that. But you say, oh, we can't do that because our church will never go for that. We can't do that because our board just isn't, there's not going to support that. Well, then you need to work on the culture of your church and prepare them for change so that they will embrace forward motion and innovative approaches to ministry so you can reach a community and a world that is changing all the time and old ministry practices just don't work like they used to. And so that's the opportunities. And then we've already talked about the weaknesses. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the, the threats portion of the SWOT analysis. Again, there are things out there that you can anticipate and you can't. Um, but putting together some sort of thought into okay, this next year, what are the threats that we can expect? So even right now where we're sitting, it's, you know, July, 2021, there is the possibility of another surge in the COVID-19 and more shutdowns and more adjustments and pivoting that we're all going to have to do. Now, the first time it caught us off guard and we really struggled to kind of figure things out. The second time, if we have another wave and we have to shut churches down or go online or pivot some other way, it's not going to get us out of the blue because we see this one coming. And if we're not prepared to deal with that threat, that's on us. That's our responsibility. And that's where the threat portion comes in. And so, um, and so take time, really take time to sit down with your team, maybe over a week, uh, maybe over a couple staff meetings, maybe you just take a whole day and you sit down and you go through, create your own SWAT workshop and really, you know, Go through the process of looking at uh, the the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of your church, of your ministry, so that you can position yourself with better strategic approaches to growing your church, reaching your community, making an impact, and changing lives. Again, you can go to my uh, my blog, brandonpartycooper.com 
slash SWOT, S-W-O-T. And right there, you can see the six steps. I explain them for you, the six steps on how to hold your own workshop, as well as get a free SWOT template so you can print them off, hand them out, and uh, let your team go through the workshop together. Again, I think it's a fun workshop. I think it's fun for uh, your team to do. It's very insightful. It's challenging at times uh, because you have to be honest and you have to be okay with, you know, you know, saying that, you know, somebody, you know, areas of our church are not doing well and we need to figure out why. So it's a little bit challenging, but it's a lot of fun to do together. You get to see what other people are thinking, especially when it comes to the opportunity area to sit down as a lead pastor with your team and to hear and see all the different opportunities that your staff think are out there and which ones you want to go after and try and tackle. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do. And so I would encourage you again, go to brandonpartycooper.com slash SWOT, S-W-O-T, get your free template, look at the six steps on how to hold your own uh, SWAT workshop and uh, yeah, and get ready for planning season. Planning season comes September, October, planning for 2022. It's hard to believe we're already there. Uh, do your analysis now so you can be ready then to do your planning for 2022 and have a strategic approach to how you're doing ministry in 2022 and making difference in your community. So hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Get your SWAT. Go to brandonpartygooper.com slash SWAT, S-W-O-T. Get it. Have the workshop. Get your planning together. Make a difference in your community. Reach people. Change lives. Advance God's kingdom. And I will see you in the next episode.